What's up, nerd friends? Let's talk about some motors. Okay, so I found out about this tool that Hobby Wing has had for quite some time, and I forgot to order one, and I forgot to order one, and I forgot to order one. So now I have one. This is the rotor. What's the official name on this thing? Let's see on the package. It says rotor replacement tool. I'll put the link and all that fun stuff down in the description. But this guy makes uh, taking your motor apart, putting it back together a lot easier. And it applies directly to the uh, 3650 and 3652 size motors because uh, that's what it's for. It may be able to be used with the uh, longer 3660 motors, but I haven't tried yet. So we'll get to that. But this is my old motor out of my drag car it's a five turn it is the xe run is how i say it v10 g3 version so g3 is the latest generation of the v10 motors sorry i keep using the wrong wrench these are 1.5 wrenches up here and the tool helps Keep the rotor in the center of the stator so that it doesn't get all scratched up or cause any problems. So I'm going to pull this guy apart and I want to clean it because it's been in my car for a while. And then we'll kind of take a look at some stuff and put it back together. But one thing, when you do work on motors and you're planning to take them apart or have them anywhere near your bench, see all these huge holes and all these vents? Clean your bench very, very thoroughly. I even go so far as to use a piece of tape and I roll the tape across the bench to pull up any metal shards or metal dust or anything that might be there. I've seen plenty of people work on their motors and then they never work again correctly after that. They bring them to me, I take them apart, I put them back together and there's all sorts of stuff inside that's not supposed to be there. So watch out for that. So you got the three screws loosened. Let me make sure I got these all the way loose. And then you can take the screws out of your one. I tend to leave them in there. And then it's a matter of slide. I like to do the front end bell off. Set the, Look at how much dirt's in there. To set that aside. And then this is when the rotor tool comes in. Versus, you can just slide it out. I've done it that way myself. But it's better to have some protection in there. And even if you don't have one of these, if you take like, um, let's say, some stickers. I like to use stickers. The, the backing of some sticker. And you could say cut this guy and make a tube out of the sticker material right so that you have an installation tube that you could slide down in there as well so this is not the scale you do cut that nicely but you get the idea so this guy slides in like this sits right there and then you can slide the rotor out without doing any fun scratches or any of that so then with the rotor especially the best thing you can do with your rotor is have a clean bag sitting somewhere. I just so happen to have this little tiny one. Stick it into a bag and let it sit somewhere so that it doesn't... This guy is dangerous. He will pull to collect all the dirt and dust and everything that there is to collect. So this, being a five turn, doesn't have a termination ring at the front. Some of you might have seen inside of these motors before, and this looks a little bit different. So I'm going to grab a five and a half turn, take that apart, and we'll have a look inside of that as well. So sometimes, so like on this, the first motor, the washer stayed, the little shim guy stayed on the end of the motor. This one, it went into the end bell. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. And then, so this is probably what most of your motors are going to look like. This is actually a pre-production version of the motor that I got that has these weird vents in it that are different than the standard motor, but the rest of it's pretty much the same. So once again, rotor tool goes in like so, kind of just slips into place, and then you can very easily take your rotor out. And like, I still got another bag. And one thing you definitely don't want to do is if you're working on multiple motors or have rotors around, don't let them smack into each other. The... It's like a ceramic style of material, and it can be pretty easy to chip and stuff like that. So don't let it touch anything. But so that's a five and a half next to a five, and you can see the difference in the way the, the rings terminate. The coils go around, and one side terminates here, and one side terminates to where the, the wires connect. And on this guy, that this termination ring is is hidden. It's right there. It's not really hidden, but you see this piece? That's the termination ring, and then the wires pass through that, with an insulation, and then they get through into the tabs that connect the motor wires to. Just allow us a very fine tuning. Sometimes you want that ultimate feel, and half turns have been around for quite some time, and a lot of folks didn't know what they were, so there you go.
So let's put these guys back together. Now, you clean these guys all out. I don't like to use any spray cleaners or solvents. That tends to be kind of bad for everything. So a little bit of compressed air and a brush is usually about all you need. And very, very, very light drop of oil. I've seen folks like douse these bearings with oil. And really, you just need one little tiny drop. And I get asked all the time, what kind of bearing oil do you use? I go to the hobby shop and I buy bearing oil. I think it's just very lightweight synthetic style oil. Maybe like uh, back in my days of racing oval, my dad used to give me to use motor oil, actually, like synthetic motor oil, the lightest weight, the 0, 020 or 0, 010, whatever that is. And we use stuff like that. Whether that's good or bad, I'm not really sure, but bearings seem to be okay. So rotor tube goes in there. Now this guy, the shim stayed on the rotor, So, but if you do have to get your shim out of there and put it back on, make sure you keep track of where your shims are. If there are any shims on the back or whatever, usually there's not. One of the problems that you'll run into rebuilding motors in general is the distance of this guy from the sensor board that's in the, in the, the end bell of the motor. That can really kind of start to affect your end bell timing. So so make sure you keep track of all that when you're taking your stuff together. As the end of the rotor gets farther away from the stator, or the sensor board rather, the rotor gets farther away from the sensor board, it'll change the way the timing is read by the speed control and the sensor board for that matter. And it even changes with the RPM. So at some RPMs, it's above what you have it set to and that some rpms it's at where you have it set to and kind of depends on the load so keeping that consistent is is pretty important when you're going through and working on your motors and in the same regard like let's say you got a motor that's giving you some grief sometimes the spacing is wrong on it so working on that so i slide that down in there and i give the rotor a small twist as i go to get it to want to fall into the bearing and you'll feel it kind of flop in there and then you can slide this guy out It'll want to pull to the side, so you just be real careful. Let it sit, and then put this guy. Oh wow, that's very dirty. So wipe the dirt off first, so you're not pushing anything in, and then give this guy a nice brush off. And again, just the tiniest drop of oil. The what what ends up happening a lot of times the oil that you put in there it'll attract more dust and make it worse. So I just put a little in there to get it going and try to wipe off that excess because that'll just collect us too then this guy now slide this on put the screws in put this and then or put the screws in first and then slide this on it's kind of six one half dozen the other but as you get this guy down onto the bearing surface you're going to need to rock that just a little bit to get it to fall into place and then there's uh they're all threaded just in case this goes through here And these guys are 1.5 hex screws. So they're very thin thread. This is a two mil thread. So you can't really get down on gorilla hand tightening these things. Like you want to two finger this like that. Like not too much tighter than that. Otherwise you run the risk of uh, snapping some bolts and that's no fun because these are hard to track down. And then anytime you reel build a motor, it's very important to make sure that it still has a little bit of end play. That's fine. Like it's maybe a little bit much. If I, if I was sitting around doing nothing all day, I'd probably put maybe another shim in there. That's not terrible. But you want as little amount of play as you can have in the end bell, but still have some play. So let's do it again. We'll put this other one together. This is the 5.5 the turn. And I said before, this has some goofy parts on it because it was a pre-production sample. So rotor tube goes in. There's a magnet sticking stuff over there. Just check this guy out. You always want to kind of give your rotors a once over, make sure they didn't grab anything. But I put these right in a bag, so I'm not too worried about it. This was a brand new motor that was never run, but I would normally do one very light drop of oil on that inner bearing. You slide that in, give it a twist. Rotor tube comes out, it's going to pop to the side. Now this one, because it's so new, all the shims stuck to the end bell. So i got to move those onto here before I put this back together. And this particular one had two shims. Motors will not have all the same shims. There's some tolerances in the manufacturing of rotors and end bells and all that. So they're not going to be identical. All right, so this guy goes in here. 
often you will have insulation rings and stuff like that in there. So if any parts come out, make sure they go back in. You got to do this stuff carefully. But like I think I was saying, the the rotor or the motors won't all have exactly the same shims because there are some tolerances that they deal with and they get kind of built to uh, correct and play. And again, you, these are little tiny screws. You can't you can't be cranking down on these super tight. So, but you do have to tighten them. It's a good idea that after you rebuild a motor to go back and check your screws because a lot of times, you know, he did something a little bit off. You didn't tighten it quite right. So it's good to go back and, and check to make sure that these guys stay tight. And then again, make sure it's got end play. Like as little as you can have and still have some. So there you go. That is some usage of the new rotor. It's not new. It's new to my workbench, rotor replacement tool. This is one I leave in my toolbox all the time now. If you get to the track, you get something in your motor, you got to get in there and clean it, or you got time to kill. You can take a motor apart, clean it out, put it back together, service your bearings, stuff like that. These are great to have around. Makes the, the process a whole lot easier than just having a cardboard tube or something along those lines. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't forget you can send us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. Thanks for watching.